Hello, and welcome to Mastermind with me, Clive Myrie. Now, you will have noticed that there are three contenders in the spotlight tonight rather than the usual four. That's because the person in seat two had to withdraw from this program. So, the three remaining contenders in the spotlight tonight are... Graham Jackson, a charity events manager whose specialist subject is Grace Kelly, the American actress who became a princess, giving up her Hollywood career to marry into the royal family of Monaco. Jill Leatherbarrow, a freelance editor and translator whose subject is the Brother Cadvile Books, a series of historical murder mysteries set among medieval monks written by Edith Pargeter. And David Priest, a contact centre planning specialist. He'll be answering questions on the groundbreaking Beatles recording sessions at Abbey Road between 1962 and 1970. This is the last of the heats, with just one space left in the semi-final round. One final chance to move a step closer to becoming this year's mastermind champion and having to find room on the old mantelpiece for the much coveted bespoke winner's glass bowl. Of course, the best things in life never come easy and beating the clock, subduing the pressure and enduring the spotlight are part of the trial of becoming a mastermind champion. A barrage of quick-fire questions, two minutes on a chosen specialist subject and two and a half minutes on general knowledge will decide who will be back to chance their arm once again in the famous black chair. We wish them all the very best of luck. So, can I ask our first contender to join us, please? Your name? Graham Jackson. And your occupation? Charity events manager. Your specialist subject? Grace Kelly. The American film star who married into the royal family of Monaco. In two minutes, starting now, which school of acting attended by Grace Kelly in 1947 gave her a rating at her audition which described her as good but with an improperly placed voice? The American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Yes, in which 1952 film did Kelly give a performance she was so dissatisfied with that she said she rushed back to New York to take acting classes again? High Noon. Yes, what's the title of the play written by Kelly's uncle, George Kelly, in which she made her professional theatrical debut as Florence McCricket? The Torchbearers. Yes, what was the name of the character played by Kelly in the television drama The Rockingham Tea Set, archive footage of which is believed to be the earliest surviving example of a performance by her? Florence. No, Sarah Maypin. During filming for Magambo, Kelly surprised her co-stars Clark Gable and Donald Sinden by ordering a meal for them in which language? Swahili. Yes, what's the title of the 1953 film for which Kelly failed the screen test, though she later said it was significant for her career because John Ford and Alfred Hitchcock used it to cast her in subsequent films? Taxi. Yes, at the 1955 Academy Awards, who lost out to Kelly as Best Actress and was said to be furious at the thought of her taking off her makeup and grabbing my Oscar? Judy Garland. Yes, the film censor Joseph Ibreen wrote to Paramount asking to have the fireworks removed from a love scene in which of Kelly's films, complaining that the symbolism was pointed. To Catch a Thief. Yes, the photos of Kelly's first meeting with Prince Rainier first appeared in which French magazine? Paris Match. Yes, what was the name of Kelly's poodle who travelled with her bridal party to Monaco on the USS Constitution and also accompanied her on honeymoon? Oliver. Yes, what was the title of the duet that Kelly and Bing Crosby sang in High Society, which sold over a million copies? True Love. Yes, Kelly's studio, MGM, infuriated her by advertising which of her films with a huge billboard on Broadway of her own face on top of a model's body? Green Fire. Yes, Kelly's wedding dress is a pink brocade two-piece for the civil ceremony and an ivory silk worn at the religious ceremony. A day later, were both created by which Oscar-winning costume designer? Helen Rose. Yes, which organization I've started so I'll finish, dedicated to protecting children, did Princess Grace set up in 1963 as a reaction to the plight of Vietnamese children? The Red Cross. No, Armada. And Graham, you had no passes, and at the end of that round, you've scored 12 points. Thank you. And our next contender, please. Your name? Jill Latherbarrow. And your occupation? Freelance editor and translator. Specialist subject? The Brother Count File Books. Yes, the historical murder mystery series written by Edith Pargeter under the pseudonym Ellis Peters. In two minutes, 
Let's go. Brother Cadvile, who has been both a crusader and a sailor, is now a monk and herbalist at which English Benedictine Abbey? Shrewsbury Abbey. Yes. In the first novel, A Morbid Taste for Bones, Cadvile and other monks from Shrewsbury Abbey travel to Gwytherin in Wales to acquire the bones of which saint? Saint Winifred. Yes. What game bird is served to Gervais Bonnell in a sauce poisoned with oil of monk's hood? Partridge. Yes, Olivier de Bretagne is revealed to be the son of Cadvile and the Syrian fruit seller Mariam, with whom he had a relationship in what city before he became a monk? Antioch. Yes, in Brother Cadvile's penance, the saddlebags of Brian de Soulis contain his seal depicting a swan and another seal which does not belong to him. What animal is engraved on the second seal? Uh, a bear? No, it's a salamander. What spike device causes Nicholas Faintree's horse to go lame as he and Torald Blund ride along a woodland track carrying William Fitzalan's treasury to Wales? Caltrop. Yes, in The Raven in the Foregate, what's the full name of the baker whom the new parish priest, Father Aylnoff, accuses of delivering short-weight loaves? Jordan Ashard. Yes. In The Devil's Novice, Merriott cries out what word in his sleep that one of the other novices thinks is the name of the boy's demon familiar, but is actually the name of a horse. Pass. In The Holy Thief, the process whereby each of the claimants to St. Winifred's relics reads a random passage from a copy of the Gospels, which they believe will reveal the saint's choice, is known by what two-word Latin name? Sortus Biblica? Yes. In Dead Man's Ransom, what's the name of the murdered sheriff of Shropshire whose duties are taken over by Hugh Beringar? Gilbert Prescott. Yes. What's the name of the stringed instrument belonging to the jongleur Lillywin that's found broken but is restored by Brother Anselm and returned to him at the end of the Sanctuary Sparrow? A Rebecca. Yes. In An Excellent Mystery, Nicholas Harnage returns to what city now in the possession of Queen Matilda's army to try to find out what happened to the dowry of the missing woman, Julian Cruz? Bristol? No, it's Winchester. And Jill, you just had the single pass in The Devil's Novice. Merrick cries out the word Barbary in his sleep to one of the other novices. And at the end of that round, Jill, you've scored nine points. Thank you. <laughs> And our final contender, please. Your name? David Priest. And your occupation? Contact centre planning specialist. And your specialist subject? The Beatles recording sessions. The Beatles studio recording sessions between 1962 and 1970. Two minutes. Let's go. The Beatles recorded nearly all of their songs at the Abbey Road Studios from 1962 to 1969. Throughout that time, the studios were officially known by what name? EMI Studios. Yes. When the EMI producer, George Martin, asked the group whether they had any issues with the instructions they'd been given at the band's first session with him, George Harrison responded, I don't like your what? Tie. Yes. On the 11th of February 1963, the Beatles recorded all ten new songs for their debut album, Please Please Me. Which track was recorded first? There's a place. Yes. At the major recording session for the album Please Please Me, the track I Saw Her Standing There was known by what working title? 17. Yes. During the recording session for Tomorrow Never Knows, the engineer Ken Townsend devised a technique known as ADT for combining vocals, the letters ADT, standing for artificial what? Double tracking. Yes. Who came up with the title A Hard Day's Night for the Beatles film with the title song written and recorded just days later? Ringo Starr. Yes, George Harrison's Love You Too was recorded in April 1966, featuring Anil Bagwat on what instrument? Tabla. Yes, paperback writer pioneered a bass sound using a loudspeaker as a microphone, a machine called Automatic Transient Overload Control, and Paul on what make of bass guitar? Rickenbacker. Yes, during a mixing session of I Am The Walrus, a live feed was set up from the BBC Third programme during a broadcast of which Shakespeare play, with bits of it appearing in the song itself? King Lear. Yes, the applause and laughter added to the title track Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band was taken from a live recording of the comedy review Beyond the Fringe at which London theatre? The Forum. No, the Fortune Theatre. George Harrison's Only a Northern Song underwent various remixes with the unusual result that John Lennon does not feature on guitar. Instead, he's credited with piano and which other instrument? Mellotron. No, the glockenspiel. Who played alto sax at the recording session for the song You Know My Name, Look Up the Number, in June 1967? Brian Jones. Yes, it was Brian Jones. 
And David, you had no passes, and at the end of that round, you've scored 10 points. And at the end of the Specialist Subjects round, let's have a look at the scores. In third place, with nine points, it's Jill. In second place, with 10 points, comes David. And in first place, with 12 points, is Graham. So, now, the general knowledge round. And if there's a tie at the end, then the number of passes is taken into account and the person with the fewer passes is the winner. And if they're tied on passes as well, there's a tie break. So, let's ask Jill to join us again, please. So, Jill, you start with nine points. You now have two and a half minutes on general knowledge. Starting now, Lisbon is the capital city of which European country? Portugal. Yes, Morrissey was the lead singer of which British band formed in Manchester in 1982? The Smiths. Yes, in Greek mythology, which renowned huntress reluctantly agreed to get married but insisted that any suitor would have to beat her in a race or be put to death? Artemis. No, Atalanta. The 2018 stop-motion animated film Early Man, which features the voices of Eddie Redmayne and Tom Hiddleston, was made by which British film company? Um, DC? No, Ardman. What do the letters QC stand for when they appear after the name of a lawyer? Queen's Council. Yes. The title of which BBC television quiz show that began in 2009 is an adjective that can mean having little use or purpose? Pointless. Yes, the element with the chemical symbol CF was given what name after the university and US state where it was discovered in 1950? Californian. Yes, a tiger is the hybrid offspring of a male tiger and a female of which other big cat? A lynx. No, it's a lion in which play by Brandon Thomas first performed in 1892 is an Oxford University student persuaded to impersonate the wealthy Brazilian relative of a fellow undergraduate. Pass. In December 2020, which British boxer retained his world heavyweight titles with a ninth round knockout of the Bulgarian fighter Kubrat Pulev? Anthony Joshua. Yes, the name of what device consisting of a large fabric canopy used to slow a person as they fall through the air is derived from the French for protection against the fall. Parachute. Yes, which American author, best known for his novels, wrote the non-fiction work The Green Hills of Africa after a safari trip to Tanganyika in 1933? Saul Bellow. No, Ernest Hemingway, a shade of bright auburn hair, is named after which Venetian painter born around 1488? Uh, Tintoretto. No, Titian. Which large cemetery in West London, owned by the Crown, features in the films Golden Eye and Johnny English and is the final resting place of the suffragette Emmeline Pankhurst? Uh, Acton. No, Brompton Cemetery. The Latin phrase e pluribus unum, often translated as one out of many, appears on the great seal of which country? New Zealand. No, the United States. In 1999, Kevin MacLeod began presenting what television architecture series about people who attempt to build their own homes? Transforming spaces. No, it's grand designs. And Jill, you had one pass. The play by Brandon Thomas, first performed in 1892, Charlie's Aunt. And at the end of that round, Jill, you now have a total of 16 points. Thank you. And next up, let's have David again, please. David, you start with 10 points. The score to beat, as it stands, is 16 points, and you've now got two and a half minutes of general knowledge. Let's go. In the traditional children's fairy tale, Little Red Riding Hood, the title character visits her grandmother only to find what animal in disguise? A wolf. Yes, in which Olympic sport are the two sides of the court separated by a net measuring three feet high at its centre? Tennis. Yes, what was the name of the Norwegian adventurer who sailed across the Pacific Ocean in 1947 on a balsa wood raft named the Kontiki? Rasmussen. No, Thor Heyerdahl. Which letter key on the standard UK keyboard is immediately to the right of the Y? You. Yes, in 1995, the composer and broadcaster Michael Barclay began presenting which music and discussion programme on BBC Radio 3? Pass. 
What's the term from the Latin word for 100 for a rank of officer in the Roman army who was nominally in charge of 100 men? Centurion? Yes, the great-grandfather of the American media personality, Paris Hilton, established a famous hotel chain. What was his first name? Thomas. No, Conrad. In what 1962 film did Elvis Presley play a boxer called Walter Gulick? Jailhouse Rock. No, Kid Galahad. The prestigious American educational establishment, often referred to as MIT, is known in full as the Massachusetts Institute of what? Technology. Yes, the essential ingredients of the Italian dip, bagna corda, include olive oil, garlic and which fish? Anchovy. Yes, which Canadian singer had a UK number one album in 2020 entitled Dark Lane Demo Tapes? Justin Bieber. No, Drake. The Chinese and the American are the only two living species of what large reptile that closely resembles a crocodile? Cayman? No, Alligator. Which dramatist wrote the BAFTA-winning television series Boys from the Black Stuff, first shown in 1982, about a group of unemployed men in Liverpool? Alan Bleasdale. Yes, at the start of a game of chess, for each player, which piece sits between the knight and the king on one side and between the knight and the queen on the other? Bishop. Yes, a rugby club formed in 1890, which has no home ground and is represented by players from different clubs and countries by invitation only, first played against a touring international side in 1948 when they beat Australia 9-6. What's the team's name? Barbarians? Yes, in Greek mythology, what's the name of the paradise described in Homer's Odyssey as the place where heroes such as Menelaus would live after their deaths? Pass. Morbier. Reblochon and Port Salut are French varieties of what dairy product? Cheese. Yes, it is cheese. And David, you had two passes. Elysium is the name of the paradise described in Homer's Odyssey. Oh, it's the pressure of the chair. You knew it. And in 1995, the composer and broadcaster Michael Barclay, he started presenting Private Passions on Radio 3. And at the end of that round, David, you now have a total of 20 points. <laughs> Finally, let's have Graham again. So, Graham, you start with 12 points to score to beat. To get through to the semi finals is David's 20 points, and you've got two and a half minutes of general knowledge. Let's go. A number raised to the power of two is said to be squared. What corresponding term is applied to a number raised to the power of three? Cubed. Yes, a large crack or fissure in the Earth's surface, such as the San Andreas or the North Anatolian, is known by what geological name? Fault. Yes, William Shakespeare, Michael Faraday and Edward Elgar have each appeared on the reverse of which denomination of Bank of England note? Five pounds. No, 20 pounds. What was the name of the male doll launched in 1966 as a British counterpart to the American G.I. Joe? Pass. In 2002, which film director became the first non-royal person to be appointed president of BAFTA and was succeeded in the role by the Duke of Cambridge in 2010? Richard Attenborough. Yes, which major conflict of the 20th century is sometimes known in the UK as the Great War? The First World War. Yes, what word for a type of canoe originally built by the Inuit people is a five-letter palindrome? Kayak. Yes, what's the name of the former England footballer who joined Alex Jones and Ronan Keating as a permanent co-host of the television programme The One Show in 2021? Pass. What's the medical name for the big toe? Metacarsal. No, Halex. In which EU country did the Law and Justice Party, or PIS, win the most seats in a 2019 parliamentary election? Italy. No, Poland. In the late 1990s, which Irish pop group had four consecutive UK number one singles, including C'est la vie, Roller Coaster, and Blame It on the Weatherman? Bewitched. Yes, in the opening line of a traditional nursery rhyme, Dr. Foster went to which city in the west of England? Gloucester. Yes, at the Academy Awards in 2021, what animated film featuring the voices of Jamie Foxx, Tina Fey, and Graham Norton won the Oscar for Best Animated Feature Film? So. Yes, what's the title of the senior officer of the royal household who had the power to censor any stage plays for more than 200 years until the 1968 Theatres Act ended theatre censorship in Lord the UK? Chamberlain. Yes, the Lord Chamberlain. Despite its name, the pink fur apple is a variety of what vegetable? Carrot. No, potato. What nickname is given to the rugby union clubs London Irish and London Scottish, indicating they're foundation by people from regions outside London? 
provincials? No, the exiles. Which hospital has its origins in the Cambridgeshire tuberculosis colony established in the village of Bourne in 1916 and in later years grew a reputation for its pioneering heart and lung transplants? St. Bart's. No, Royal Papworth Hospital. In July 2016, the NASA spacecraft Juno went into, I've started so I'll finish, went into long-term orbit around which planet? Venus. No, it was Jupiter. And Graham, you had two passes. It's Jermaine Genus, who is now on The One Show as a permanent co-host, and Action Man, of course, launched in 1966 as a British counterpart to the American G.I. Joe. And at the end of that, Graham, you now have a total of 21 points, and you've done it. Thank you. It was a tight one. Let's have a look at the final scores. In third place with 16 points, it's Jill. In second place with 20 points is David. And in first place with 21 points, it's Graham, which means that after all the heats, he's the last of our contenders to make it through to the semi-finals. Congratulations to him. And the very best of luck to all 24 of our semi-finalists who, over the next six episodes of Mastermind, will be competing for a place in the grand final. They've proved themselves once, but who will do it again? Let's remind ourselves of the contenders. I feel like Mastermind is the Mount Everest when it comes to kind of individual quizzing. In first place with 24 points, it's Ian. Becoming a Mastermind champion would be incredible. I mean, so many incredible quizzes have taken home that, that glass bowl and it would be a real privilege to be one of those people. I applied for Mastermind. It was a moment of madness, but I'm quite glad I did it. Take that leap of faith, a bit of a step out your comfort zone and go for it. And then if you win, that's a bonus. <laughs> In first place with 22 points, it's Roe. Absolutely thrilled. Come back and uh, see what we can do for the semis. Mastermind to a British quizzer is the ultimate accolade. There's nothing else in British quizzing that comes anywhere near that. In first place, with 30 points, it's Anthony. To actually win the heat is phenomenal. Winning the series would be the ultimate accolade. When you first walk into the studio, it is very intimidating. I certainly wondered what I was doing there. It feels a little bit easier once Clive starts asking the questions because you're just concentrating on the questions then. Pain and glory. Yes. Table tennis? Yes. Way out ahead. In first place with 25 points, it's Lucy. I think the revision for the semi-final starts straight away. Mastermind is the pinnacle for any nerdy quizzes like me. In first place with 22 points comes Gary. So to actually win, it, it's it's I think it's beyond words really. When Clive read out the score, I couldn't actually believe it. And in first place with 20 points, ran Veer. And then as it sunk in, the emotions came out. <laughs> <laughs> to become Mastermind Champion would mean so much. It's not even something that I can think about for the moment, but it would be incredible. What would it be like if I win the final? Some worthy semi-finalists, to be sure. But how might you have done? Fancy a go in the famous black chair? Are you willing to endure the spotlight, the pressure and the ticking clock? Do you really know all there is to know about your pet specialist subject? Well, if you would like to be a contender in our next series, please go to our website, bbc.co.uk slash mastermind, and you can, as always, follow us at Mastermind Quiz. Join us again next time for the first of the Mastermind semi-finals. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. first come into the studio and you sit in the black chair for the first time, it's daunting, but um, I would describe myself as quite competitive. I enjoy competing in pub quizzes and things like that, and I'm always very happy when I win. In which 1952 film did Kelly give a performance she was so dissatisfied with that she said she rushed back to New York to take acting classes again? High Noon. Yes. Judy Garland. Yes. Helen Rose. Yes. Going into the general knowledge round, I was similar score to um, other contenders. I didn't have any capacity to think about what my score was, how many I was getting right or wrong. You're just focused on the questions as they come um, and try to answer them correctly and then move on. 
was the title of the senior officer of the royal household who had the power to censor any stage plays for more than 200 years until the 1968 Theatres Act ended theatre censorship. Lord Chamberlain. Yes. I thought it might be close, but yeah, to win by one point, um, relieved. You now have a total of 21 points and you've done it. Thank you. My friends and family will be amazed. Anyone at home thinking they might apply, I'd say go ahead and do it. I've had uh, a really amazing experience today and looking forward to doing it again.